Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. As we've talked about, this team's just terrible, terrible, terrible until they get a win like last night and they drag you back in and makes you want to watch some more. So we'll get into how everything played out in last night's game and go over the rest of the series today. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode, of course, brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Carter. A Blue Jays home opening win. Does that shock you at all? It seems like this team likes to play well on opening days, no matter if it's the opening day of the season, opening day at Rogers Center. So you can usually chalk up the Blue Jays for an opening day win. I'm more worried about the rest of the series. Today we did look good. I mean, every facet of the game, Jose Brios again, just an absolute dog. Again, could be an ace on pretty much any other team. And then you get a little bit of the bats going. You get David Schneider in the lineup, and he produces once again. So a pretty good game all around. But hopefully we can uh, round it off the rest of the series, at least take two out of three. But uh, a sweep would be huge for this baseball team. Yeah, I think when we talk about this team more and more, I think that the the big thing that always comes up is consistency. This team is so inconsistent. They'll, Like I said, sort of in the opening, is they'll play terrible, and you're like, oh, my goodness, blow up the team. It's over. And then they get a good win and it gives you a little bit of hope. And then they decide to rip it away from you. So it, it yeah, yesterday's game was a very, very fun to watch. Um, I was having fun with that. I know all the guys, again, we were on the PlayStation chatting about the game as it was going on. And then I went into the living room and Carter's out there watching as well. So yeah, it was, it was a good game to watch. Jose Barrios was just electric. I'll give you a quick rundown on his stat line. Six, six and two thirds innings pitched four hits allowed. No runs, six Ks, one walk. Just classic Jose Barrio stuff. He was just looked phenomenal. He looked unbelievable. Uh, just working his way through this Mariners lineup. Like I said before, I'm not too scared of this Mariners lineup. You got Julio Rodriguez. Obviously, he's going to be a scary at-bat every single time. Mitch Hanniger is another guy that I'm a little bit scared of. J.P. Crawford, a guy that seems to kill the Blue Jays a lot. Cal Rally, a couple of guys in here that are uh, a little bit of Jays killers, but overall, Ty France and like kind of in my opinion, lucky day today, broke a bat in his last at bat there and somehow blooped it into right field. But uh, it's the pitching that I'm worried about. If this Toronto Blue Jays team can score runs against the Seattle Mariners, I think it's only going to take four to five runs. They can probably get away with three in a lot of cases as well. So it's nice to see the bats working against a good pitcher in Luis Castillo. I know he has struggled a little bit to start the season. But uh, yeah, Jose Barrios uh, becoming the bigger dog in this game against Luis Castillo. It's nice to see uh, our ace cooking up the uh, Seattle Mariners. Well, I'm talking about Castillo. His stats today did not look good. And it, it sort of mirrored his stats from the beginning of this year already. It's just not looking great for him out of the start. He had five innings pitched, nine hits, four runs given up, six strikeouts and a walk. So it's just, you know, he just wasn't locating some of those pitches and the, and the Blue Jays were taking advantage of, you know. And, and that's the good thing about seeing from this Toronto Blue Jays team is when there was pitches to take advantage of, it seemed like we were doing that today. Where in other games, it's like we're chasing, an, uh, a, you know, a slider outside or a high fastball. And then we end up not getting one of those mistake pitches. And I think that goes back to what you said over the past bunch of days is going up there with a plan to have or in the at bat so that, you know, you're not going to give them a couple free strikes on you and it takes away your opportunity to get those mistake pitches. And that's exactly what the Blue Jays were doing a lot of the time where they were taking advantage of Luis Castillo. Again, it's when these pitchers start to struggle. It's usually not a velocity thing. It's usually not that their stuff isn't breaking. It's usually about command. And Luis Castillo clearly today was leaving pitches over the middle. Didn't have, do too much damage in the aspect of home runs, but we got hits together. We strung hits together as a team. David Schneider again in a big spot. Kind of just flo- throws the bat at an outside pitch, but gets a bloop single, a huge two, uh, two-run two single there. I thought Bo Bichette was going to have a home run on an opposite field double. He absolutely smoked that ball a couple feet away from getting that home run. Justin Turner in the second inning, again, another double close to being a home run. It got tucked in that left field corner, so I, I thought it was a home run right away, but didn't have a good camera angle on it, but didn't unfortunately go out. But again, yeah, all, all around, just a good uh, good 
effort from this team. The only player on this team not to get a hit today was George Springer, which is a little bit unfortunate from your leadoff hitter. But again, when IKF's contributing, Kevin Kiermaier, these guys throughout the order are getting hits. It's always nice to see. You're going to take this game for sure as a Blue Jays fan. Finally getting some runs. You're getting the, the pitching you always expect from this team. A good bullpen start. Yimmy Garcia looked very good today. Chad Green, other than that solo shot giving up, looked great again. So an all-around good effort from the Toronto Blue Jays team. Yeah, and I think, like you said, we we're talking about sort of the Davis Schneider hit there um, in his first at, or his uh, first hit. He, yeah, he threw the bat at that pitch, but that's the difference, right? When you have guys that that are swinging the bat well, and and when you're riding the hot hand like Davis Schneider, those hits just seem to find those guys, right? Where you know, if you have a guy like Bobichet who might do the same thing, who's maybe on a little bit of a down, you know, cold streak going into this game, um, maybe he doesn't get that blue. Maybe that, you know, is a little bit of a pop out to the second baseman or something like that. So, yeah, it's it, baseball is weird like that. But sometimes uh, certain players get lucky and other players don't get those same breaks. I know I felt that on MLB today after losing four straight games. Uh, so rough one for me. But overall, very, very solid game from the team. Like you said, only one player without a hit is um, miles above anything that we've talked about before on this podcast so far this season. So we'll take that for sure. The bullpen looked amazing, as you were talking about. Carter, I want to ask you one thing, your biggest takeaway. outside. I'm going I'm to take it outside of everybody getting hits. Give me like a little bit more of a specific. Uh, it, it's Jose Barrios for me. Just uh, the reliance that we can have on this guy time in and time out. You, you know he's going to give you at bare minimum five innings. He's always going to go, it seems like, into the sixth, seventh inning. Today, it looked amazing again. And what I found was uh, his resilience again when IKF, a great throw from Kevin Kiermeyer. IKF, kind of a bad play, missed the tag on the leg as a paying him on the body, gets into third base. But still, Jose Brios just sits in there, doesn't let it go to his head. And then what is great about Jose Brios is that things that happen throughout the game, he doesn't change no matter what. His emotions always the same. Still has that killer mentality, bounces back, gets two outs in a row. They don't score in the fifth inning. Just uh, Jose Barrios, again, a huge piece to this team. When you look at a depleted starting rotation to start the year with Kevin Gosman, still it's kind of struggling to figure it out. Seems like he's okay. Alec Manoa doing Alec Manoa things. Bowden France is struggling a little bit. It's always nice to have Jose Barrios as a key piece to rely on throughout this starting rotation. Yeah, I, I, I would say for me, it's it's along the same vein. It's It's the resilience of this team. I think going into this game, with a lot of doubt or, uh, you know, a lot of doubt in Blue Jays fans' minds of can this team hit the baseball? And I think to come in and do this in your home opener, that really shows the will of wanting to win. I think we even saw that when Vladdy uh, broke to first last game, you know, where he you could tell he was giving it everything he had. So I think this year, the, the difference of what I'm seeing so far is, yeah, the bats and stuff before this game really didn't look very good. But it's, it's almost like you can see a little bit more heart with these guys. You know, they, they, they're, they're showing a little bit more of emotion when stuff isn't going their way. And they're showing a little bit more. Um, I, I, I don't want to see, say professionalism, but a little bit more professionalism. They don't get super over the top excited. They stay in their game. They, it's, it's a little bit more focus, I guess is the right word when things are going their way to continue that. Like we saw today, you guys would get hits. It's not like everybody's, you know, jumping out of their seats over a base hit. Now it's like, okay, I'm, I'm on first. I got to focus on what I'm supposed to be doing. And you could see that just on their faces with the different camera angles that they were showing today. Um, so I hope this continues, but like me and you have talked about over and over again, it's the consistency. And will we see this continue into the rest of this series and hopefully into the rest of the year? I don't know. I don't know. We asked you guys last episode on, in the comment section, if, you're hitting the panic button. We got a lot and a lot of responses saying, I've already hit the panic button. I don't need to worry about hitting the panic button because I hit it back before, you know, opening day. Um, some people saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. And that's your, you guys were mimicking exactly what we were saying. We said the same things on last episode. If you look back yesterday, it was the exact same comments that, that you guys were giving us is what we said. It was, yeah, we're frustrated. We're frustrated watching this team not be able to perform. And now we're at a point where, okay, these guys have to show us what they're really sort of made of. And if this team has the will and the heart to be a playoff contender. And today was a good first step, I think. 
Absolutely a great first step, especially when uh, the Mariners, it's not going to get any easier when you have Kirby coming up and then Logan Gilbert as well, two phenomenal pitchers. I think one thing that Blue Jays fans are going to ask is, are the Blue Jays actually starting to turn over a leap, like you said, and take that next step? Or were they just taking advantage of a starting pitcher that has had his struggles throughout the start of this, uh, these first couple weeks of the season? I thought a part of this game that I liked is that we were getting runs in every inning, it seemed like. Where we I, just looking at it now, we got a run in the second, two runs in the third, a run in the fourth. It wasn't just one big inning. We actually yeah. got some consistency throughout the lineup. Again, we could have cashed in a couple more times. And there was a few times where I think it was the Davis Schneider single where he actually advanced from first to second on a throw home. Where after that, we didn't get any more production out of the lineup. I think there was a Kevin Biggio pop out and then a Kirk strikeout or something along those lines. So there is a few things that you can take advantage of. It would have been nice to completely put this game to bed. But it is nice that you're getting runs in the second, third, and fourth inning. It's not just a reliance on long ball. But yeah, looking at this team, Blue Jays fans just want consistency. They want to see this lineup produce these amount of runs consistently throughout games. Because yeah, it is nice when you score eight, nine runs. But when you're scoring nine runs in three games, and then you're scoring three or less runs in the next seven, like not including this game, that's not a great recipe for success. So we just want to see consistency from this lineup. Keeping Davis Schneider in might be a key to that and Ernie Clement as well. So, and then again, with Kevin Kiermeyer and IKF, you're going to get the minimum of defense. You know, they're going to provide you good defense. So if they're not hitting, it's not as big of, the, of a deal. But with the Toronto Blue Jays lineup, we need offense. We need the consistency. because You're always going to have the pitching. If Davis is hitting, if Ernie Clement is hitting, if Kevin Biggio can catch fire, any of these guys, doesn't matter who it is, can get some fire going in within this lineup. I think we need to keep them in regularly. I 100% agree. And you know what? I, I do want to touch more on this, but I do want to mention to you guys, if you if you haven't already, we notice a lot of you guys that are, aren't are subscribed that are viewing the videos. So why not just drop a subscription? You know, it helps us out. It helps you guys out. It puts us at the top of your feed. So you guys get all the Blue Jays news all the time, which we will. We do have some pieces to go over, uh, just some basic Blue Jays information coming up. Uh, some you know extra little tidbits on some guys, injury updates, a couple other different things. Uh, also, you can follow me, Braden Fivey Wasco Carter First Two on Twitter or X, Locked On Blue Jays on Instagram and TikTok, I guess. Uh, and then yeah, we'll get right into more of this series or more of this game as soon as we come back. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is my favorite way to purchase tickets. Because I can see the view from my seat, which is a huge bonus for me. Just, you know, when I'm when I'm browsing ticketing apps, I can't stand not, you know, maybe picking a seat. But, you know, I notice in some ballparks, there's some different things in the way. Is there, is this a bad spot because I'm too far up? Am I too close? I know when I went to a couple NHL games and used game time, it was nice because I got to see, okay. Well, first of all, I got four rows up from the glass, which was just electric. And we got one of their flash deals that we hit as well. So we got even more money off. And the good thing was, is we knew we weren't getting overcharged, anything like that, because the prices are all shown up front. And that's why Game Time is my number one go to for purchasing tickets. Uh, the other great component of them is it shows you if your ticket is a good deal or not. It has this little red or green dot next to the ticket uh, price. So, you know, if your ticket is a great price for that seat. If you guys want to check out Game Time, I'd highly suggest you do that. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time for a limited time. All users can get $20 off and any MLB purchase of 150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th. Only download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So just going a little bit more in depth into today's game as it was a 5-2 victory for the Toronto Blue Jays. Just, yeah, you know what? I haven't felt good about a Toronto Blue Jays win yet this year. Maybe the first game, maybe the first game. But even that, you can see some cracks in the armor. This was a very consistent overall game from the Toronto Blue Jays. Like you, you brought up about the, you know, not just scoring one big inning. I think that is a huge part for this team. Because there's going to be games where maybe your bullpen gives up a couple runs and it ties the ball game late or it makes it close. And you not being able to score again is a big problem. So I think when we see them be able to put together rallies and, and hits and runs together throughout the entirety of the game, I would much rather see that than just a couple big blasts here and there. 
Well, when you're looking at it in the eighth inning there, where we had a, a leadoff double, if you don't get that run in down in the ninth inning, you had two runners on. If it was a two-run game, 4-2, there could have been one swing of the bat where it was a tie game. So that insurance run is so big for the Toronto Blue Jays. Mind you, this bullpen is so good. Do you need those insurance runs? Maybe not, but it's always nice to have them. So, yeah, just the reliance you're going to have on the bullpen. And providing this bullpen and starting pitching staff with any runs is always going to help you out. It's not going to have to be seven, eight runs for this bullpen and starting pitching. If you can do three, four runs, this starting pitching and bullpen is good enough to suffice on that. You don't need these huge games. But again, it is always nice to get offense. It's a lot more enjoyable to watch when you get offense and consistency throughout the lineup. But with uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays offense, all we need is four to five runs per game, consistency for throughout the lineup. And I think a lot of Blue Jays fans and the front office will be very happy with the production. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and you're right. This doesn't need to be – don't, we don't need to kill every team 10-2, to two, right? Unless it's the Yankees. Then, I mean, we could, we could win 10-0, three-game set. I'd be pretty happy with that. You no, know, I, yeah, yeah. I, I would be thrilled about that. But, you know, it's not going to happen. Sadly, as we've seen with this team, they're just not going to always put together rallies like today. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting, I think, over the next coming weeks, I want to say. Maybe even just the next couple days of if this Blue Jays team can keep this going. Like, what, what are your honest thoughts? Do you think this is the start of something new or is this – just a little bit of a bloop in the overall not great season that the Toronto Blue Jays might have. Uh, I, I can't say anything yet. It's been one game coming off of a few series where the offense was not producing whatsoever. Again, a starting pitcher that's struggling. I think it's really going to matter off of George Kirby, depending on what this Toronto Blue Jays offense can do in the future. I think this series is big though. You got a very good rotation in the Seattle Mariners. If you can start building up momentum in this series, start to get uh, a couple easier opponents in down the stretch. I think we got the Royals coming up. The Rockies are coming to town soon as well. So those are going to be easier matchups. Then you got some tougher teams as well. So you want to keep the consistency up. Again, this pitching is going to give you it. So uh, if you can just get offensive consistency, David Schneider and Ernie Clement, I sound like a broken record. Keep these guys in the lineup. I think John Schneider's starting to come a little bit closer to terms with that. With uh, Again, it's tough when you pay IKF $7.5 million a year to tell him that he's not going to be playing every day. But when you're getting 280 from Ernie Clement, when you're getting home runs and massive hits in timely spots from David Schneider, you got to have these guys hitting. Yeah, exactly. And and I mean, that's that's the biggest point. It's the clutch hitting. It's the it's the hitting with runners in scoring position that we've we've talked non-stop about getting hits with runners in scoring position, be able to drive those runs in. And David Schneider looks like he's the guy that's doing that right now. So we need to keep him in the lineup. And, and I, yeah, I'd love to see Ernie Clement get just as much playing time as Schneids. They, the two of them together might be just the future of this Toronto Blue Jays team. This scenario is really reminding me of the Jose Barrios fastball scenario from 2022. But this guy was throwing fastballs and his fastball was getting absolutely demolished. And it seemed like everyone on the internet knew the fix to Jose Barrios and the Toronto Blue Jays. which just don't throw the fastball as much. He starts doing it and has some success. Seems very similar with Ernie Clement and David Schneider. Every single time they are in the lineup, they are producing. They're giving the Toronto Blue Jays a chance to win. The offense is clicking a lot more than when they aren't in the lineup. But it seems like John Schneider is giving them a hard time and not putting them in the lineup every day. And it's just as frustrating. Seems like all the Blue Jays fans know that we have a better chance to win. We have a better chance to put up more runs if these guys are in the lineup. So hopefully we do see that a little bit more consistently throughout the year. But there was one more thing I did want to bring up. I'm not sure if you caught the opening ceremonies aspect of this. Yeah. Why is Alec Manoa at the Rogers Center? Thank you. Thank you. What, I needed what, somebody what to say here. What, what, what are we doing here? You know what? I we, we were all sitting in the party together and we're watching it. Granted, we were all on like different timings. So I think like when David Schneider was running out, Bo Bichette was running out for somebody else. Justin Turner was running out for somebody else. But then... We all sort of did like a almost that we had to do a double take. We're like, why is Alec Manoa here? This like guy this, should be under a bridge somewhere, probably. This guy can't even have a productive start in single A. I, the fact that he's even like with the opening day roster, I think it's an insult to all the MLB players because this guy is not producing at all. I think if he can be productive in maybe double A, if he was doing that, like, okay, he's like at least getting close to the major leagues, but. This guy should maybe be like throwing a sim game or like maybe throwing a bullpen, trying to figure out his command rather than uh, celebrating opening day with the MLB roster. Yeah, and he's not in a jersey. He's in just a sweater. I'm like, 
dude, whose decision was this? I guess because he might be still classified as injured with the rest of the guys, like Eric Swanson, Jordan Romano was there, which oh, was nice man. to see. Dan yeah. Jansen, hopefully these guys are coming back soon, and we do have some updates on them as well that we'll get into later. But yeah, Alec Manoa, stay away from the Rogers Center unless you're going to be a productive pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. I agree. Uh, before we head, head out and take a break, Carter, I know uh, the people need to check out this Locked On 24-7 streaming channel. Yeah, it's a great opportunity with all the sports going on. We talk about it pretty much every episode. Basketball, football, it, free agency is still going on. NHL playoffs getting close. March Madness. Pretty much everything you could ask for in the sports world is happening. If you want our expert opinion on that, you can go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first 24-7 streaming channel. After this, we're going to get into some injury updates. We're going to tee up the rest of the series and just have some more Blue Jays talks and storylines. So we'll get into all that after this. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments for this time of the year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, when you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Test your skills on Prize Picks this season, and it is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can easily turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Again, I am doing. I am just kind of settling in on the MLB. I stay away from basketball because, I mean, maybe I could actually use the basketball. It might help my prize pick success. I'm not knowing as much. Maybe just doing a shot in the dark. But I'm going to stick with. Uh, I'm going to stick with baseball, and I'm actually going to go more fantasy oriented this time because so far I'm 0 1. I think Braden started off with a win. For me, my team is. I still like my team, but my relievers were horrible, and that was the reason I lost. But I'm going to kind of hope my. Uh, my prize picks, picks can help me here with some fantasy voodoo and uh, wish wish hell on the rest of my opponents. So I got George Springer with an over because you got to go with the Toronto Blue Jays. That was more than six and a half points. Vladdy more than six and a half points. I'm surprised that line was set that low. Julio Rodriguez, just because we're playing the Mariners, I have him less than seven and a half points. And Juan Soto, because screw the Yankees, less than seven and a half points as well. So if you guys want to join me in my prize picks, uh, picks here, you can download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to one hundred dollars. That's code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to one hundred dollars. So, Carter, just before we get into sort of everything else, I have a little bit of an update on Yardel Rodriguez and his start in AAA. Um, he did uh, pitch two and a third innings. He got two walks. He he did hit somebody, so he got one hit by pitch. He got four strikeouts. 47 pitches, total of 26 strikes, and his average velo and max velo were both up. His uh, average is now sitting at 93.2, and his max was sitting at 95.9. So almost 96 on the gun for his max fastball, I think, is a big component that could be joining his game. That's the awesome thing about this Toronto Blue Jays team right now is that the bullpen still, in my opinion, looks pretty good. I think it's like MLB average right now. And we have reinforcements coming in. You have Eric Swanson. You have Jordan Romano. You could have Yariel Rodriguez as another option as well. So a ton of depth from this bullpen. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how they deal with this dilemma. But it's definitely a good problem to have. A lot of bullpen arms that can be effective in the MLB. I want to see Yariel Rodriguez just because we haven't really seen a lot of him because of his injuries throughout spring training and just the fact he didn't play baseball last season. So for me as a fan, I definitely want to see him, but I, I have to trust management and the front office in managing Yariel Rodriguez and doing what is best for the Toronto Blue Jays, even though they haven't really shown me a reason why I should with uh, the lack of playoff wins in recent history. But I think uh, we're one last year. We got to roll with the front office. Hopefully they can uh, manage Yariel Rodriguez properly. Well, you know what? When it comes to pitchers, they they've, they've ha they have a really good track record outside of, you know, of course, Alec Manoa. But outside it of was him, good they, for a while. They had him figured out for a year, at least. Year, two years you could give him. Yeah, but, you know, they do have a good track record. So I, I do have full faith that, you know, I think Alec Manoa is his own problem. I don't think that's necessarily a down point to the pitching staff and the, and, and the coaching staff uh, when it comes to the pitchers. But, yeah, we'll see. I have to see what happens. Uh, in regards to Romano and Swanson, do you have a couple updates on them as well? Yeah, Romano, it looks like he is going to be making a start in Dunedin, Buffalo sometime by the end of this week, going by Danny Jansen, actually. So, again, reinforcements coming in soon. Eric Swanson was supposed to throw a sim game 
I'm not sure if he ended up doing that because I don't think he did because he was there opening day today. So I think he's scheduled for that tomorrow. So again, Eric Swanson, Jordan Romano, Danny Jansen, all scheduled on very similar timelines. Not going to take too long for them to come back. They'll have a couple of Dunedin starts in AAA, probably one or two most likely. Hopefully back sometime at the end of this week, maybe by the weekend. But definitely nice for this uh, Toronto Blue Jays team, especially with Danny Jansen. Hopefully we can get some power from the right side of the plate from his bat. Yeah, yeah, it'll be nice. Hopefully, you know, when we get him back, we'll be able to roll him out some more. You know, Kirk hasn't playing necessarily the way we wanted him to start the season. So I think maybe, you know, getting Jano back could just be a huge, huge component to this baseball team. Yeah, and another thing I wanted to get into that we have talked a little bit about on this podcast, but again, from John Sang, Vladdy was asked about an extension with the Toronto Blue Jays and how likely that would be uh, to come up in the future. And Vladdy was, uh, had a statement about this and said, I would like the Toronto Blue Jays to offer me a contract extension, but they have not done so yet. Right now, I'm focused day after day. I'm calm, but no matter what, they are going to have to pay me sooner or later, whether it's this team or another. So Vladdy, again, he's open to it. I think he may, may, there maybe is a little bit of frustration in this, uh, in this quote here. I, I, I sort of see why, because he has had a lot of expression to stay with the Toronto Blue Jays. But when you're not producing as a superstar, like as you want to be viewed, it's tough for the Toronto Blue Jays and you to have to agree on a number for your contract. So again, huge year for Vladdy. I don't think it's been too bad this year for him yet. He is hitting for power. He had a good game today. But it's a huge contract year. It's going to be interesting how the Toronto Blue Jays staff deals with this down the stretch. Yeah, it is. And it, and I think the biggest piece to this is, is we don't really know where he's standing right now. After the, la- after the last couple of seasons, it's been up and down and, Now we really don't know where to stand with him. I think even me and you talked about this and saying that, like, you know, what's your opinion on Vladdy? Oh, he's got to be better. Oh, he's, oh, he had a good game. Oh, he's got to be better. He's just very, very inconsistent of a player. And it's hard, I think, probably as a management group to figure out what you should be paying this guy. I think that it's tough for them to figure out if they have a preference on Bo or Vladdy as well. Like, is it going to come down to paying one or the other? Obviously, you would want to keep both of them if you can. But they are going to have obviously over a hundred million dollar contracts. You're probably going to, you're probably going to want to lock them up for an extended period of time. So I, it's going to be interesting to see with Bo and Vladdy having contracts ending in the same year. If whether or not they're going to be uh, contract battles between the two of them, whether Vladdy signs first or Bo Bichette's going to want to one up him and get paid more than Vladdy, it's going to be maybe some internal conflict there. Um, in my opinion, right now it has to be Bo Bichette over Vladdy. But again, this season can change a lot. Bo Bichette's playing a more premium position of shortstop. Vladdy, again, lacking the production. But you want to keep both of them. Again, it's nice that Vladdy is saying that he wants to focus on this season and just take it day by day because at the end of the day, you don't want your players to be focused on contracts when you're two weeks into an MLB season. So in that aspect, that was good to hear from him. But uh, that's the contract talks will definitely be an interesting storyline throughout the season. Well, and you know what? Before you know we get into anything else, I do want to go over tomorrow's matchup. Just, you know, of course, we have to do our picks. I think we did them, but, like, I think let's get, you know, sort of in-depth them. I had them winning tomorrow's game. You had them losing. Is that right? Uh, yes, that is correct. Yeah, I had okay. them winning the Kikuchi start. That's right. Okay. So we have Kirby versus the Hound tomorrow. At uh, in, in, For us, it's uh, 6.07, I believe. I think the we're, we're, whatever time zone you guys are in, it might be different. But, uh, yeah, 6.07 for us, that's uh, honestly such an electric time of day for me to watch baseball. When it's, you're it's working perfect, the I think. It usually ends around 8, 8.30. That's uh, pretty close to the time that you can probably wrap things up, maybe get an MLB game in or two if you're uh, you're Braden here. But, yeah, I, I love that the games start at 6 o'clock. It's definitely a nice change from uh, the Canucks games when you have to stay up until uh, 12 o'clock or 1 a.m. to uh, finish out a game like that. Yeah, so – it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I I think we need to see more from Bassett. I don't necessarily think that like I'm even close to a panic button or anything with him. Um, but I think definitely we want to see more production from him. We need to see him be a little bit better. And I think it's going to be a tough matchup against Kirby. But um, overall, I th- we think we know that Bassett has the skill to be able to compete here. I think it's just, you know, the first two starts were the first two starts. Again, I'm not that scared of this Seattle Mariners lineup, but I think a big thing for Chris Bassett would to be get up early for him, get him a little bit of run support. Because so far he has gotten like literally none, like, but he's also given up runs early on in games, usually coming in the second inning. So it's tough when you're giving up 
uh, two to three run home runs and you're getting your, your team down early when they're already struggling a lot offensively. So again, it, it's kind of a team, a thing you got to rely on both sides of the baseball. You want Chris Bassett to be able to give you effective inning early, but it would be nice if you can get a Vladdy home run, you get Bo Bichette, maybe a double in the gap, Justin Turner being as clutch as he is, getting some production for this offense early on in the game. Yes, allowing Chris Bassett to settle in and not feeling like if he gives up one run, he might lose the baseball game. Yeah, and I think that's the huge problem that that you know we've had many discussions about is that it's probably very difficult for a pitcher to go in and say, okay, I, well, I can't give up one run. I have to be perfect when necessary. You know, no pitcher need, can be perfect all game long. So, yeah, it's a little bit of more of a pressure. And I think you miss pitch like that once in a while. So if these guys can be more loose, trust their offense to do their job, I think that's a huge piece. Yeah, and so far the outlook on the Toronto Blue Jays has not been very good from us in recent times because how how could it be with uh, the lack of Toronto Blue Jays offense? I know fans already are saying that uh, they wouldn't be surprised if we don't make the playoffs. A lot of obviously Yankees fans, Rays fans, Red Sox fans, everyone's kind of discounting us, ex- discounting the Blue Jays, not thinking that they're going to be even close to the playoffs. So it looks, seems like the Toronto Blue Jays are underdogs for the first time in a while. A lot of betting services and just the general fans have had them in the playoffs, if not making a deep run in uh, the playoffs, possibly getting to the ALCS or World Series. So I, I want Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, I want the Toronto Blue Jays to prove people wrong. Obviously, Toronto Blue Jays fans want the Toronto Blue Jays to prove people wrong. That all stems from this offense. Again, it started today. Hopefully, it can drag out throughout the Seattle Mariners series, and we can catch a spark and have some offensive production and actually be at least a middle tier offense throughout the season. Yeah. You know what, guys? We want to thank you always for sticking with us, watching our content, listening to our content. If you're doing it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you download your podcasts. Um, And yeah, on YouTube, make sure you guys drop a subscription uh, to us. You know, it's easy enough. It helps us out a ton. And uh, yeah, drop a comment, drop a like. Tell us what you guys are thinking. We love reading the comments. I actually have a ton of comments to get back to tonight because I saw some really interesting ones. I just haven't, you know, between me trying to win games of MLB the show and watching Blue Jays new in the podcast I haven't had a second but tonight I will try to get back to a lot of you guys uh we also had a Bruins fan comment on our Blue Jays podcast I think he was trying to throw it in our face that we were Canucks fans so I took a little bit of offense to that but we do appreciate anybody and everybody who watches and that is a Toronto Blue Jays fan as well because it gives it cancels it a little bit out for me when you're like I'm a Bruins fan and I'm like okay well don't like this guy but then you say oh well I'm a I'm a Blue Jays fan. Or I said, you know, I'm a Canucks fan. But at least then, you could find some common ground, yeah, with that yeah. being the Jays fans. So yeah. in, that, in that sense, it's a, it's a tough discussion to have, though, because the Bruins definitely don't have a good spot in my heart, and I'm assuming it's the same for you. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan, to say the least. Marshan is just an absolute loser. The but only time Brad Marshan is a good person is if he's representing Canada. That's the only time <laughs> you can give him any respect. That guy's a rat. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching again. Uh, the likes, comments, uh, subscriptions are always appreciated. We uh, are posting on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram Reels, so just be sure to be checking that out. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully with a Mariners sweep. If not, just get let's take two out of three at minimum. But a sweep would be awesome for this this team. We need it bad.